You are very welcome back to the Empowering Family Health podcast. Today on the show, we have Russ Devan. I'm really, really excited to be speaking to Russ because Russ is a gorgeous man. He's a very generous man and he's an incredible speaker and coach. And he really values relationships, like re- really deep, meaningful relationships. And we need relationships in our families and also in our business. And how we relate to people effectively is something that we can master through the art of listening. And this is something that Russ teaches on his program, Success by Design on Training. There's a lovely quote on Russ's website, which says, listen like your life depends on it because it does. Russ talks about how our life experiences teaches us to listen in a certain way, which isn't always the truth. And what Russ, what Russ does is he teaches people or teaches them to untrain all these lies um, that we've believed as we were growing up, all these conditionings and really find them what doesn't work in our lives, what's missing in our lives and what really matters to us as well. Not to other people, what really matters to us as individuals. And this stuff is just gold because it is the key to a successful life, which can ripple out to your family, other relationships and even society as a whole. So listen into this episode, make sure you like and subscribe, tell your friends and family as well, share this episode with them and let's get into the conversation. I am super, 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 super excited because I have an incredible man here, Russ Devan. And Russ Devan, I met Russ Devan uh, many times uh, through uh, a friend of mine, Declan Dowling, and a few other people that I've been networking with. And I really wanted to have Russ on this show because Russ has some powerful, powerful, really empowering information that he has to share with you and really information that will have you moved and really give you something to wake up for in the morning time and you know what life is a game and life is a journey and it's moment by moment and we're going to really uncover all of that and Russ is going to share with us some of his background and information and Russ um, really studied an awful lot about what it is to be human and it's just an intriguing conversation you know because we're all human beings so we share that and Russ, I really want to welcome you and thank you for being here with us today. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for asking me. Great, great, great. I'm so delighted. I'm so excited. <laughs> so I'll have to ground myself. I'm so excited to have you on. Russ, tell us before we get into our conversation, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and you know what, what, what you're really passionate about, I suppose, or where, you're, where your passion comes from and what it is, the work that you do in this world? Wow, that's a that's a. I hope I can be concise enough not to take up the whole, <laughs> the, whole the whole hour on that one. Um, I guess who I am is I'm uh, an excited, uh, enthusiastic, uh, entrepreneurial um, coach. I guess, and I, I use that word loosely because. I don't feel like I'm a life coach. I don't feel like I'm a business consultant. I don't feel, I, I'm just somebody who is grateful. And, and and probably that word would be the one I'd really want to put out front because I am an extraordinarily blessed man. And this is not to wax religious or anything. What I mean by that is I contrast my life and my experiences with, of course, those around me, which I think is normal. And when I look at, the experience I was given with two unbelievable parents, oh. you know, a fine education, yeah. you know, loving family, uh, important values. Um, just, I've had a blessed life. I've got, you know, uh, I, I've been blessed with a family of my own. And, and I guess particularly in the last three years with a couple health challenges, I've really come to look at what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And so I'm someone who's creating something that will um, succeed me. I think that's the proper term after my death. And 
for the last 30 years, I have owned and had a company called Success by Design. And that really came from, in one sense, my entrepreneurial experience and my experience in business in another, particularly from the business model of network marketing and looking at why it didn't work for people. Mm. So I actually created something, sourced something would be, you know, when I say I created it, it probably didn't start with me. I'm only a sum of what other people have contributed to me. And I've had many, many contributions from wonderful people, some that are still here and most of them that are not. But success by design was an inquiry about why this business model was not that it didn't work at all, but why it was ineffective. And so when I explored that, I found the areas where I believe people struggle the most. And then I created a possible solution to those areas with a new kind of training that I call untraining that really comes from, I guess, my ontological path of personal development. Mm -hmm. So in in a nutshell, that was probably wordy and- I love all that. (laughs) But that's, that's what I am. And so right now, I, I'm I'm having more fun probably than I've had in 30 years. I'm fully engaged. I'm managing my health, you know, uh, and the challenges that were thrown in front of me that really, and every one of those I think was, again, its own blessing because it really had me low. And I've, you know, always taken pretty good care of myself. I'm not a smoker or a drinker. I don't ever do drugs. And, and still we've had congestive heart failure and cancer and stroke and all those things. And I, and I, you know, I thought, geez, you know, I better figure out what I'm doing with my life before I don't get a chance yeah. to do it anymore. And, and it really had, it really gave me a different perspective. And so I'm here to accomplish something. I'm here to contribute as much as I can to as many as I can for as long as I have to do it. That's incredible. And you know what, Russ, what I can hear in all that, Russ, is you, you, you were telling us that, um, you know, you, you help to coach people and but you didn't actually label yourself as that. And you want to come from who you are, who you are as Russ Devan, an individual and where your passion lies. And a lot of us kind of label ourselves. And there's this thing about labeling and we're fitting into this box. And, you know, we label ourselves as something and then we have the whole role model thing as well, you know, and that's another box that we can put ourselves into. But what I can hear in what you are saying about who you are, Russ, is you're living from your passion and what matters to you. You spoke about your values and you also spoke about uh, contributions. So contributing through your experiences to help other people as well. And really, I think that's where the life lessons are, is through our own personal experiences. Thank you. And, and you know, I would say I can't, I can't. I guess it's like, I can't find a box the right size. (laughs) Or a lid to put on us. Yeah. Every time I find a box, I don't fit in it anymore. (laughs) Good. So so anyway. Brilliant, brilliant. So Russ, um, what what I want to talk about as well is uh, you spoke about gratitude and coming from a place of being grateful for your life and I love that whole conversation and it's a very big conversation and I think for many people as human beings I think we're wired to look at the negative things it's part of our ego it's part of keeping us safe it's the primitive brain all this kind of stuff if you want to go into that type of a conversation but really um we forget to look at what we're grateful for and there's lots and lots of studies I tell people, I, I, I talk all about sleep and how to sleep well. And I believe you're not healthy unless your sleep is, is good. And when we talk about uh, gratitude, I tell people to practice gratitude first thing in the morning because it really sets you up for the day and last thing at night as well, because that has you feeling safe and calm so that you can have a good night's sleep. So can you expand a little bit more on um, your uh, perception or your experience of of being grateful and and how gratitude has an impact on your personal life sure um what what occurs for me about that talking about gratitude and for instance a lot of things that are in personal development are positive or negative and one of the things that's really helped me is understanding that there's a choice 
and there's two different sides to everything in the universe and they both exist at the same time mm. so what allows me to be grateful is actually seeing and embracing what other people are going through like appreciating the negativity that's in the world not avoiding it not pretending it's not there which is i think what we're almost told or thrown to do is like i don't want to i don't want to be around that because that's negative i don't want to see that because that's negative i, I want to just i want to be over here well there's no way to do that because there's no double negatives in the universe there's no not not something mm. you know and so so you you can't do that so what i do is i'm i'm aware of the negative i don't avoid it i see it and it's then fair. i choose and then i choose something else so when it comes to being grateful, the thing that makes that easy for me is seeing the abundance that I have, not what I don't have, oh, yeah. just the, 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 what's like all, there's so much to be so much more to be grateful for than not, than not to avoid. So if, but it, you won't know that unless you also see where you're not grateful. Like in other words, what it means to be a human being is to, to be negative and to, and, to, and to be not grateful. And if you avoid those things, you're not being grateful, you're being not ungrateful. And there is no not ungrateful, you know? Oh, yeah. So you can't be not ungrateful without being ungrateful. It's you can be grateful, point. but you can't be not ungrateful. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, and I think that that kind of is a line, a, a, a linear thing that runs through life. And most people wouldn't deliberately be that way. It's just that they don't see that they have a choice. So it's just like in my business model, what I try to see people show to people is that what's missing a lot of times for people is a choice. Yeah. They don't, they don't see they have a choice. And like, you know, if, if for instance, let's, let's take the conversation about complaints. I think, you know, um, complaints, this is going to sound funny. I think complaints are actually a gift. <laughs> okay. So here, here, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put this to practice. I'm, I've already decided I'm going to get buttons printed up. Okay. And the button is going to say complaint department. And I'm going to see who asked me what that means. Why are you wearing a button that says complaint department? And I'll say, you got a complaint? Give it to me. And here's why complaints are a gift or why I say that. Of course, this is, you're going to probably already think I'm crazy, but if you can <laughs> listen to a complaint, see, nobody gets their complaints listened to. People avoid complaints. They think, yeah. oh, that person's a whiner and a complainer and it's negative. Get away from me. Yeah. Well, yeah. what if it was like this? What if you actually got interested in somebody's complaints? And I'll tell you why you might want to do that. Because again, this is the world according to Rusty Van, my theory is that people are a bundle of complaints and commitments, concerns and commitments. And we don't really hear the concern that's underneath the complaint. So when somebody's complaining about their weight, yeah. what's, what's the concern about their weight? Well, it might be their health. It might be their appearance. It might be this and it might be that. But we don't know that. We just know we don't want to be around it. So what if you could listen to a complaint about pain or weight or, and I'm referring to the business side of it now, you know, but what if you could listen to the complaint and say, what are you doing about that? Like, it's not an issue for me, yeah. you know? So what, 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 what are you concerned about? What, what's, what's your concern? And then once you identify the concern, it's like, well, what are you doing about it? Not like, hey, I got something for that, which is how we listen to complaints. Either we don't want to be around it or we want to fix it with something we have to sell. Yeah, and yeah, we're yeah. actually taught that in, in selling. Yeah. And so, so what, how this got off, all off on the gratitude thing is this. There's two sides to everything. And once we start being okay with the other side and letting it be there, yeah get a choice about it and guess what the choice does the choice disappears it yeah the choice actually has it go away because we've chosen you know and that's another thing choice what an interesting word that is because when you choose something don't you decide well when oh. you decide something 
the word decide means to kill choice. Yeah, yeah. Isn't yeah. that interesting? Because <laughs> side is, of course, Latin for kill. And then decide means to kill choice. So it's really interesting when you offer people choices, their whole, like all kinds of things can open up from that because people don't, this is again, just my opinion. I think that there's an awful lot of people walking around that don't see the choices that they have, which could really free them up. Yeah, and and what I can hear there, Russell, if I'm right, so these two things, you know, the negative and the positive, if you want to call it, they they coexist together. That they have to be that the yin Absolutely. and yang, wherever you want, where you want to look at it. Well, yes, right. Because when you see the or when there's a complaint there, so there's something wrong, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's something wrong. There's something not working. Um, so you can. And then obviously, so, so, so a lot of people are fixated on that and they like to complain and some, and there's a reason for that. We'll talk about that in a second. So there may be a reason why people just like to complain. Um, yes. but, oh, they, they get something for the complaint. They yeah, get, yeah, they get a, they get, they get a payoff, don't they? They, they get yeah, they do. Sorry yeah. for doing that. There's, there's always a reason why we're being a certain way. But when you complain, and as you say, there's a concern underneath it. So it might not be obvious to everybody else around them so when you have somebody in your life complaining quite an awful lot of the time there's a concern that they have so we're not listening to people um effectively um because we're not hearing their concern all we're hearing is blah 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 moan 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 and we don't want to go near them is am i right, right. In saying no that's right no and culturally i think that that's true and it's what i would call a cultural trance because we don't think anything about that. That's what everybody does. That's the paradigm is you avoid yeah. negative people and complaining and whining. And that's their problem. And I don't have time. I got my own set of things to be worried about. But the thing that's interesting about listening is listening is so powerful because if you listen to someone, they can see it themselves just by being heard. And so that's, that's like at the root of everything is I believe that people, for the most part, and that isn't true 100% of the time, but for the most part, as, a, as humanity, as a culture also, we don't feel heard. And, and so it's not that that makes us a complainer. It's just that you, you've got people who are so disconnected yeah. because of, of, the, you know, of, of the paradigm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when we're children, there's everyone knows this saying, children are seen and not heard. Oh boy, was that ever one that was thrown out at me all through my childhood? Yeah, children yeah. And I people. had that as well. And I really felt that as well, right, growing up. And as a result of that, Russ, and I think a lot of people out there can relate to this. So children are told, oh, hush, hush, stop making noise. Or if they're crying, they're told, Shh, stop crying, stop crying. Right. So they're not allowed to complain, but there's a concern underneath that. There's a discomfort, there's an upset, or something that's not been addressed for the child, right? Yeah. So they're not been heard when the parents are saying shh, hush, hush. And look, parents mean well, most parents anyway. Of course mean, they do. Mean well for their children. Um, but when you understand it from this different perspective and the concern that's underneath that for the child as they're growing up, and that's part of the conditioning. We hear all about conditioning and programming and from society, from the parents, teachers, all of this social media. But it has us be who we are today in the world, but well, it's part of it. And it's no wonder that we're going around for many people, many adults, and they don't feel heard, they don't feel listened to, and there's a whole disconnect there. They don't feel good enough because they're not acknowledged, they're not accepted. Would I be right in saying there's a lot of that? Oh, no, it's, that's right. That's right on the money. And the thing that's beautiful about what you said is these are things that occur for us when we're very, very young. Yeah. And, and we make decisions about that decisions about not just, Oh, you know, I'm, I, I need to shut up, but decisions connected to exactly what we're upset about. So it's not okay to be upset about whatever it was that wasn't heard. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is we start to live our life out of that. And then as adults, we forget that we decided that as a four-year-old, you know, we, we, we grow up. And so now the adult intellect, you know, is like, well, yeah, and this is how things are. And this is, and, and so we shape our world out of what we learn as a child. And, yeah. and, and it doesn't mean now that you listen to, 
everything a child says, like it's a life-changing event or a concern. It's just that if we paid attention to it, but we, the reason we don't is we've got our own stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's, it's amazing though, how someone like you, for instance, can, you know, learn and stay in, in the growing and, and gain the perspectives that you do and still be interested in that. And I think, well, the mm -hmm. one thing that I've learned at this point after more years than I'd like to admit <laughs> is that there's just so much I have to learn. And always will be. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's just, and, and I love, I love the learning. I love mm -hmm. being in the process of not knowing. Like one thing is I've, I've gotten really comfortable with not knowing stuff. Yeah, that's so great. The libraries and libraries and libraries with things I do not know. Yeah, yeah. And there will always be stuff that you don't know. And there's a big, huge space of what we don't know out there. Yep. So there's a lot to discover. And we don't need to know it all. But talk to us about perspectives. I love this conversation about perspectives, about how we see things. And we spoke about children and growing up and when they're told to hush, hush and stop complaining and all of this right um can you talk to us about how our perspectives are shaped from all our conditioning and what happened and what occurred in our life and all that kind of thing because it's a very sure, big well crazy. yeah no, sure uh, well you know we're some of all our experiences so the things that we learn in school the things that we learn socially in our culture and our society and I have the opinion that we've become very disconnected, you know, disconnected from each other. And I think actually the technology, as wonderful as it is, look, look at this, we, you know, we couldn't have done this 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. But technology, I think, has disconnected us as much or as fast as it's connected us. And one of the things that was a very um, useful and, and still taught today in, in lots of ontological courses and ontology just so you don't think that's a funny word or a big word that I'm throwing out ontology is the study of being and it's an abstract philosophy that most people aren't familiar with because it deals with an unusual concept and domain remember these are all just theories so I don't want you to think I'm some philosopher with the mm. truth I'm coming down with this and that it's this is just all all of this is a possibility so people have a choice again whether it, they want to believe it or not believe it. So it doesn't matter. But one of the most useful distinctions that I learned in onto ontological training was that we, we live our life in three basic domains. We talked about two of them. There's the domain of what we know. Yeah. And we know what we know. Okay. We know what we know. And whatever that is, the sum of our experiences and our education and everything else, we call that stuff we know. Then there's another domain, even larger, and that's the domain of what we don't know. But the domain of what we don't know, we kind of know. And, and the reason I say that is, like, I don't know, as I just said, lots of things. I don't know anything about quantum physics. But I know there's this thing called quantum physics, and I know who Stephen Hawking is, and I know... I know, you know, what a black hole is. And I know certain things about quantum physics, but if I want to study quantum physics and really learn and get interested in it, I can do that. And then it becomes, it goes more over to the domain of what I know, mm. but there's a third domain. And this is where perspective really comes in because this third domain is the domain of what we don't know. We don't know. Mm. And, and you hear that today. I see it in literature. I see it. I hear people on the news and, you know, in, in conversations at cocktail parties, people say, well, that's what you don't know. You don't know. No. If it's what you don't know, you don't know. It doesn't exist. Yeah. You're not aware of it. For you. Yeah. It, it's not there. Okay. Which doesn't mean it doesn't exist in the universe. It just doesn't exist for you. Yeah. So the domain of what we don't know, we don't know, we're blind to. Yeah. And what happens in life that we're unaware of is we gain distinctions. Distinctions are how we get access to the domain of what we don't know, we don't know. Like one of the best examples of that domain is if you think about a fish in water, a fish doesn't know it's in water. 
It yeah. doesn't have the distinction water. It's yeah. a fish. Okay. So water represents the domain of what we don't know. We don't know. That's, that's water to the fish. Like we're the fish. And so in, in terms of what a distinction is, a distinction is what separates that and has you unconceal what you don't know you don't know. And it can be something very simple, that, but we don't think about these things because we don't talk about it. For instance, if you see a word, you're reading something, whatever what you're reading is important to you. Yeah. And suddenly in your reading, you see a word and you don't know what it means. You know, it's just this word and you think, what does that mean? And you can't figure out what the word means in the context that it's used. So you look it up. And when you look it up, you see a definition for that word. And you go, oh, okay, I see. So that's what that word means. Now, suddenly you start seeing the word everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you, you never, you never, it never showed up before. It's not that the word wasn't there or somebody just discovered it and started using it. The word was always there and you saw it. But it, you didn't see it because it had no value or meaning to you. And you didn't have a distinction for the word, nor did you care to. It didn't mean anything. So your mind just, it, although you saw it, you didn't get it. And that's what distinctions are really about. So when it comes to perspective, I think that's one of the most interesting, interesting perspectives you could offer about learning yeah. and about growing is being able to unconceal things in the domain of what you don't know you don't know yeah that handle that a little bit yeah yeah and and to know what that reminds me of do, do you remember years and years ago there was an ad that came out about um there was a basketball game on and the monkey came out onto the and and you were you were told to really concentrate on i can't remember exactly what it was but you had to concentrate on the basketball and how many shots were taken or something on the on the basketball court and a, a, a man came out dressed in a gorilla suit mm -hmm. and you were asked at the end of the video did you see the the gorilla suit but everyone was so focused on, on counting the shots they didn't see the guy in the gorilla suit yeah 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 and he was there in the video so that was a really famous one do you, do you remember that one that, that one came out a few years ago but that was but that just remind that came into my head when you were talking about what you don't know you don't know and it's, and it's there and the, what you can see them and the antenna goes up and you can once you understand something, you know, then it's it's there. It's like when you're buying your new car and you say, oh, I'm going to buy a Toyota Corolla or whatever. Next of all, you see them everywhere in the streets, but they're, they're always there. Yeah. And, and so what the distinction is this, you didn't have a distinction for that car before because it wasn't your car. Yeah. As soon as it becomes your car, that's the only car you see. You yeah. can't, you can't be out in the world noticing every car. It just it's doesn't, your mind doesn't, your mind doesn't work that way. Yeah. And, and another thing, another good uh, example is if you are in a group photo. Oh yeah. Of people you don't know, it's, it's like a group photo and you get a copy of that photo. Whose face do you see first? No, Yours. Or your own. Yeah. Yours, of course, because yeah. you have a special distinction for yourself versus everybody else that you don't know. That makes yep. so much sense. Yeah does that makes so much sense and um and yeah and it's really really powerful when you understand when you come from that context and then when you apply it to your own life and the next question really russ is so if there's something not working in somebody's life like in a relationship for example where do people start to try to uncover or find the answer or find what and, and you mentioned about the being part as well this is, this is a really good question because culturally, again, I'm going to go back to the way we're taught and the way we think and like what's, what's normal, what we see is when something not, isn't working, something's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So either something's right or something's wrong. Well, wait a minute. Maybe it's not wrong. Maybe there's something missing. Yeah. Now, as simple as that sounds, something missing is a very, very powerful thing to look at, like what's missing. Because when you operate from what's missing, many times you can see what isn't working yeah. and why it isn't working. Because you think this isn't working because this is missing. Now, can that be put in or can is something else missing? What, what can be, what can be, 
put in that would make something work. But instead we have, okay, this works. We usually, when it's working, we don't need to fix it. So we're okay with it, it works. But it doesn't work is the leap immediately to what's wrong, which is what's good, what's bad, what's right, what's wrong. And if we're stuck there, yeah. instead of seeing, okay, so why, why doesn't this work? What's missing? We can all of a sudden we say, well, here, here's why this isn't working because this is missing. And this, this formula applies to so many different things in our life, relationships, business, sports, Everything. you know, I mean, just, it's, it's amazing how that formula fits in yeah. mechanics, physics, there's all kinds of things. It's like, it's like a universal, if, if there's a universal, uh, um, what would I call it? Maybe perspective on a formula to explore <laughs> something working. It's what's working, what's not working, what's missing. And here's, here's what I got out of that, Russ, is when you come from a place of what's not working and asking yourself that question rather than what's wrong, because coming from what's wrong, that space of what's wrong, you're immediately, in most cases, you want to blame. You want yep. to blame something. And when you're blaming, that's most of us blame our mother or our spouse or our children or it's somebody else other than us. But when we see what's missing, we can be responsible then. There you do. That's the magic word right Look. there is Look. when 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 there's blame, it's a circumnavigation of responsibility. Yeah. And what's important to see is that that's part of being human. Yeah, it is. Not, not being responsible because with great things comes great responsibility. And I think many times where we're operating from is this isn't possible. Uh, you know, I can't do this. Yeah. And it's really like, what would it make us if we did? What, what are we not being responsible for? And, and the thing is, and, and that's another great collapse that you had was blame mm. because in the, it's very, you know, I was raised as a Catholic <laughs> and uh, guilt and shame and blame. And this isn't, to, to, you know, this isn't picking on Christianity or, or, or anything, but guilt and shame and blame are interwoven in the Judeo-Christian ethic. And so, you know, accept blame becomes accept responsibility and they're not the same thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know so if you avoid blame you 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 know you may think you're avoiding responsibility but you're not yeah. so it, those are those are interesting things particularly because they are the things that run our life that we don't see that what, what we're what we're avoiding and Absolutely. you know the, the context of the context of responsibility and guilt and shame and all those things they're all back doors for responsibility uh if we blame somebody for something that they did we don't have to be responsible for our part in it and probably yeah. one of my greatest mentors who's not alive anymore said to me one of the most profound things that has become my mantra and he said, Russ, did you ever notice when something screwed up, you're always there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, it's not like I'm to blame, but it's not like I didn't have anything to do with it. How could something be wrong for me unless I had something to do with it, right? Yeah, 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 gotcha. So yeah. It's, it's really, it's, it's kind of a fun place to operate from too, because we get to see our own humanity and how silly and ridiculous we're being as well. What's that? And how silly and ridiculous we're being as well. Yeah, which is which makes it kind of light because you can say, you know what, here that is, and and you know, you know, and that's okay. It's like now now you get a choice about it. See if you can mm -hmm. see where you're not being responsible for something, and you know you can also see the choice that you have. To be responsible and there's there's another thing that is in this conversation that i wanted to mention and it just i it was there and i just lost it but 
Um, people uh, with this whole thing around responsibility. Oh, I, I can't think of it now, but it'll come oh, back. No. Yeah, I was, okay. was going to say as well, um, the whole conversation of um, guilt and shame and all that, it's very, um, some people talk about the conscious scale and vibration or whatever you want to call it. And those uh, guilt and shame are very, very low down that ladder. They're very, very low vibration. They're very heavy. So, um, and another thing as well is when we have guilt and shame, um, it's very hard to, uh, like our power is really taken away from us. That's the point. And when we can be responsible and see that, um, we, can, we can take our power back again and we have choice and we have freedom and there's such power in that. Yep. Yeah. And, and I guess that's where, that's really where I was going is once you, once you can see something, see, it's the problem is we don't see things yeah, because it, we think it means something about us. Like, like what, what does that make me if I'm this way? Oh, I know the one I was thinking of. It's actually the paradigm around forgiveness. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so one of the most powerful distinctions that I've ever learned was a new distinction for forgiveness other than the one I've held most of my life. And it's a very deep cultural one. Again, I think my opinion is it's, it has to do with the Judeo-Christian ethic about forgiveness. Hmm. How many times have we heard be bigger than that? Yeah. Just, just forgive them, you know, just, 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 just forgive them, be the better person. Well, if, if forgiving makes you better, then it's coming from like a place of righteousness. Yeah. And, and there is no relief in righteousness. No. Okay. So a new distinction for forgiveness that was very powerful for me and I still, and still is in my life is the interpretation of forgiveness as giving up your right to blame or hold somebody else responsible for what happened. For instance, there's this, there's this word trust. Well, okay, I trust you. We talk about a backdoor for responsibility. If I trust you and you do me wrong, then I get to blame you because I trusted you. You said you, oh my gosh, how could you do this? How could you do this to me? Yeah. Now suddenly, where'd you, where's, all your, where's all your power? Yeah. It's over there with them. Yeah, yeah, and you're giving. You know, them it, so, so there's no, there's no, there's no. As my coach would say, there's no cheese down in that tunnel. Okay, but if you give up, if you see your part, not like you did something wrong, like you, maybe you believed what somebody said and it wasn't true, and you lost money or something didn't work out, whatever it is, but where you've really got some power in relationship to that, and another very powerful thing that I was taught or I've been taught that I happen to believe is that it's not events in our life that impact us. It's our relationship to them. Yeah. So if it's our relationship to something that someone else is to blame, there is no responsibility in that. And therefore we have no power. Yeah. But if we can give up that right, that cultural right that we have to hold them responsible, to blame them and you give that up, then you say, okay, Guess what? In a situation where I trusted someone, who trusted them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes from you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And 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 it's that relationship to something where we gain personal power and insight, perspective, as you said earlier, perspective into how to how to be in charge of our own lives. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. And what was I going to say? Um, when we, yeah. So you're giving up being justified and being righteous. Yes, being righteous. You're giving up and, and, and people feel, you will have people that will say, hey, you have a right to feel that way. You, you know, you have a right. Yeah. And of course you do, because you have a choice. But what if you gave that up? What if you yeah. gave up that right? You say, okay, yeah. you know what? I'm going to give that one up. I'm going to let this one go. I'm going to see my part in it. And it's not going to run me for the rest of my life. I'm not going to be stuck on that thing that was done to me. And so many of us are doing that, Ross, aren't we? So many of us have this cord that we have attached to that other person and it's draining us. It's absolutely draining us. So yeah. when you talk about forgiveness, it's, 
letting go, whatever, cutting the cord, but it's it's yeah. taking your power back. It's yes, given up being justified. Right. Yeah, right. And it's it's just all the onus is on you. So it's whatever story that you give it, whatever meaning that you give it. Um and, and it's your it's coming from you. So it's your decision. It's your choice. And you know, I find an interesting paradox in that people, human beings, all of us, will will look to fix the blame. We, we will. We'll look to fix the blame here, fix the blame there. Yeah. Even blame God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. If we believe in God, you know, what? why Why did you not favor me? Why did you not? Why did this happen to me? Why are you picking on me? I and had I, that, yeah. I had a big argument with God, and yeah. So, <laughs> but, 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 you know, but the thing is, here's the thing. If 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 you you are someone of faith and you do believe that, remember that at least this is this is from my experience is that one of the most important things i've learned from christianity is that god gives us a choice he, he doesn't want to and again I, I i don't mean to sound religious because i'm really not a very religious person but if if you believe that and you believe that god gives you a choice god doesn't want to make you love him he wants you to choose yes. to love him. He doesn't want to make you have a good life because if you don't, you're going to hell. He wants to give you a choice, a choice about what you do. You have choices. And guess what? Because you're a human being, you get forgiveness. Is it conditional forgiveness? Mm -hmm. Of course not. Mm -hmm. It's unconditional forgiveness. Why? Because you're a human being. So why do we struggle without ourselves? Why do we struggle so much with that ourselves? Yeah, yeah. We're so always you know, giving out about ourselves. We're not good enough. We're kicking ourselves. We're, we, we lack uh, kindness and compassion for ourselves. And really, we have to fill ourselves up before we can be of service to other people around us. Uh, and so much to that. So, so much, you know. Very, a very wise 28-year-old psychologist had that discussion with me the other day. Really? I'm talking about my my daughter, you know, wow. just just got her master's in psychology about self love. Self, yeah, yeah, you know, do you know something, Russ? And I'm and I'm watching the time now. We're coming near the end. Um, I know that for me personally, when I practice um loving myself, look, stuff goes on around me all the time. Life happens, and it's the same for everybody. Life happens, right? So we have our circumstances and all the rest, but it's how we deal with it, how we see it is what unfolds or our, our perception, whatever, coming back to that again. But when we're full of self-love and we love ourselves and we know that we're good enough and all of that, and um, we're not being who we are dependent on the environment around us, we're, we're being who we are because we love ourselves and cherish ourselves and we're being kind to ourselves, all that stuff. Whatever happens around us seems to have less of an of a negative impact, if you like, on us. Yes. So really, when you talk about being, when we're being compassionate, we're being compassionate to ourselves, but we are being compassionate in all areas of our life, our relationships, our job, the people that we meet, um, spiritually, mentally. Um, so when you talk about being and, and being is is present. So when we talk about what's missing as well, when there's something wrong or whatever how we're being about it, when we come from a place of being compassionate, we have so much more power. Um, oh, no, that's, that's absolutely, absolutely right in terms of what I agree with. Absolutely, because that's where our power is. Yeah. Our power is in the ability to generate empathy for another perspective or point of view. And it, culturally, we're, we're at odds with that. And it has more to do with us. We don't see that we're the, we are the generator that that's when when we talk about listening i talk about generated listening versus reactive listening yeah. we're the generator and that's where our power is yeah, our is. and that's where the where the ability to connect and relate and appreciate like i i disagree with many people on on things on you know and especially today there's all kinds of things that i do not agree with mm -hmm. but i find mm -hmm. the best way to manage my feelings about it and how I'm being about it yeah is to generate an appreciation and empathy for their point of view 
even though it's not, I don't share it. I can, if I can, if I can appreciate it, if I can, and people say, oh, I understand your point of view. Well, yeah, maybe, but I'm not getting, <laughs> I'm not getting that from you. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, you're saying that, but everything you're being is telling me that that's not so. Yeah, yeah. And we're all independent creatures and we all have our own opinions, if you like. And yep. that's, that's fine. Um, and if we respect each other's opinions, because there's no right and wrong, it's 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 right for that person. Not as long as it's an opinion. Yeah, where yeah, the, yeah. Where, yeah. The, where the breakdown occurs is is we again, as human beings, have a tendency to state our opinion as the truth. Yes. And our opinion is not the truth. Our opinion is not a fact. Yeah. It's our opinion, and I think that's another place. Something as simple as framing something as your perspective or your opinion can create an opening for somebody to hear it. But when you start speaking, I'm right and you're wrong, guess what? Conflict. You just, you just shut down the listening. Shut it down because... Yeah, yeah, and then as human beings get into the defensive mode, and that's where all war came from, really, isn't it? All oh, that, yeah. I'm right, you're wrong. Um, Russ, I just want to ask you uh, very quickly, um, because I think it's very important how we create meanings and stories because you know this 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 comes into our perspectives as well just to touch on how we create you know and, and and the impact that can have on us how we how we create a story because a lot of people aren't really aware they think that this is the way it is and not realize that's actually a story that's a that's an excellent that's an excellent topic and point of view and briefly what i would say about that is again we don't have a distinction again there's that word between what we think about something and what actually happened. Yeah. So when there's an event, there's an event. And then again, this gets back to what our relationship to it is. But when there's an event, there's this that happened. We didn't, you know, they said they were going to call us and they didn't call us. Now, we have a story about why they didn't call us. It, it's not just they didn't call us. We're at it, they didn't call us because of this. They didn't call us because of that. They didn't, you know, all of a sudden. And now, now there's a breakdown in communication already because, you know, it, we, we have an interpretation about the event. Yeah. This thing happened. So what happened happened, but then there's what our version of why it happened. And that's what keeps that's what keeps us shut down. Because if we can if we can do an empowering interpretation, for instance, versus just it means this, it means this, and this this occurs. This is so our lives. It's yeah. it's like things happen to us, and then we have a, a, we make up why it happened. This is why it happened. Reason, this, is don't what, we? this is what this is what this means. And then, then it goes to, this is what it means about us. Yeah. They didn't call me because this, they didn't call me because that. And it, it just goes on and on instead of just seeing what happened and then the interpretation around it. And then you get a choice. You can have an interpretation that's empowering, or you can have a disempowering interpretation, or you can have no interpretation at all and just see this is what happened. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I does, love that, it. Does, that, does that address what you were asking? Absolutely. I, I just thought it was a really important thing to point out because it is. we um, always have a story about stuff. Yeah, and it's it's an add-on. It's not it's not real. It's not you know it's real for you, but it's it's just made up. Interpretation. There was an entire course that I took one time, and the three-day course was the distinction between fact and interpretation. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. What happened, and what the interpretation about it is. And that's 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 what we need to see. That's that's something we don't see. We cannot yeah. distinguish between what actually happened, the event, and what we interpreted it meant. Yeah. And as and soon most, as you start looking at things that way, it can shift everything. It's it's such a powerful con. And we could talk quite a lot about this whole thing. And you know, as children, uh, this is where we typically see it as well. Well, it happens all the time, but as children something happens when we're a child and we make it mean something because that's part of our survival and then we we grow up with it and then more and more things ha happen that impact and we and forgot we decided what it meant when we were four yeah <laughs> you see a four-year-old this this happened 
and a four-year-old has an interpretation of why and what it means about them because as a child what we're learning what we're listening for is what the world wants from us like why why am i here and 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 how do i get mommy's love and what what's what's all this about and and then we forget that that's then and now we're adults and we've been holding on to this interpretation we made when we were so young we didn't we didn't know yeah. any different yeah so the point yeah. is like whatever's happened how you're reacting to life could be going back to from when you were four it does five, you're, it's, it, it could be and it's right to say that that's not always no. but we repeat our thoughts and our decisions that we made as a child and those are called fundamental decisions in yeah. the ontological domain yeah. Yeah. but the if fundamental decisions that shape the rest of our life and did you ever wonder why these things keep happening yeah. <laughs> guess yeah. what because yeah. this means this yeah. yeah this doesn't mean this and you know i can tell you a quick example of how if, if you know we haven't talked about this at all not that we it should in the topic but anyone that's familiar with multi-level marketing or network mm-hmm. marketing will see that people will get in a network marketing company and it doesn't work out and then one of two things happens. They either think, well, maybe it wasn't the network marketing thing. It was the company. So they'll go do the same thing that didn't work out in that company in another company. And by the way, companies do this too. Yeah. And it still doesn't work out. And and it's like, it, it's so funny because that's just a piece of it. But another piece of it is, uh, what is it? What is it that, 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 uh, that you didn't see the first time like like what is it that what is it about it that didn't work and what was missing like we've said before versus and then here's another funny thing what occurs if somebody has a bad experience for what in whatever it is and then they decide i'm not doing that anymore like a child would okay yeah, 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 you know, that's i'm not i'm not doing that again i'm not yeah. I, I got it okay it got smacked really good whatever it was i'm not doing that again When that happens, anything in the future that vaguely resembles that scenario, like vaguely resembles that what happened, it becomes that. So it's like, I will have people say network marketing. Oh, you mean like Amway? Yeah, no, yeah, no yeah. I don't mean anything even remotely like them. Amway. Yeah, but, it, but that, that's that's the same thing, right? No, well, no, no, actually, it's not the same thing, not even, but they will, they, this, this becomes this. Yeah, yeah. That And that's, again, that's the way we are. Yeah, yeah, that is so great. That's, yeah, it was ridiculous, aren't we? We're, we're ridiculous, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of fun to see it because it once is. you start to see how yeah. ridiculous we are, that's yeah. when you start to really get some a handle on what yeah. you can do about it. Absolutely. So powerful. Listen, Russell, I'm conscious of time. Um, I really want to acknowledge you for being here. Can you tell people, um, maybe give me your web address. I know your program, Success by Design, and just a shout out on that. I'm on your program. Oh my God, it is mind blown. It is absolutely mind blown. I'm listening over the content again and again. And every time I listen to it, I'm getting something new, Russ. It's just it's just a must have this information that you have, Russ. Just, and we could talk for a very long time here. Um, well, so maybe Russ, you'll invite me back. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Part okay, so two. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can do a part two and we can talk more about success by design, but the, the website, uh, and again, this is a work in progress. It's not under construction, but it kind of is, but the website to go to right now for the course is success by design.us. And you'll find things about me there and you'll find things, um, uh, about success by design in the course and where it came from and what it's what it's kind of about and, and you have there's, a, there's an interview on there with Gaz Jabin which is very good and oh wow so, brilliant yeah these courses run regularly throughout the year Russ yeah they do we we usually do at least one a quarter so okay, there's the great. next one starts on January 22nd excellent okay great great Russ I want to acknowledge you for for the person that you are in the world you're gorgeous you really are I just I'm so grateful to have someone like you in my life and for the work that you're doing in the world because when you have an impact on people and cause and transformation in people's lives you're making the world a better place for me and for everybody else as well so thank you so much thank you Joe I appreciate it it was an honor to be here 
And thank you for being the special individual that you are. I can't wait to get to know you better. Oh. Uh, and, and I'm here whenever you need me. That is so great. Russ, thank you so much and have a wonderful day. You too. Bye now.